Hi everyone, and welcome again to my audiovisual channel. I am Gabriella Handel, a draftsman and the host of the show, A Conversation About Art. During each episode, I look for the meaning of art and beauty through conversations with colleagues in different artistic fields. Today, I bring you episode 35, and I will have this conversation with artist Randy Ortiz. If you'd like to support this podcast, liking and sharing this video is a great way to do it, and so is subscribing to my audiovisual channel. If you want to support my work, you can purchase my drawings directly from my website, you can buy my crafts from eBay, buy prints of my drawings, or leave me a tip. The links for these things are in the video caption. Thank you very much for watching and listening, and enjoy the episode. All right, so Randy Ortiz, welcome to my podcast, A Conversation About Art. You are episode 35. Please nice. tell, <laughs> yes, 35 is a pretty cool number. Please tell our listeners and viewers who you are and what you do. Um, well, I am, I guess, an illustrator artist. I've um, been doing this for over 10 years. Um, yeah, I just draw spooky, sad drawings and mm -hmm. try to sell them sometimes. and. Uh, pay my mortgage that way so <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. basically it in a nutshell so. and sometimes i'll do commercial work as well but yeah okay um tell me about this term illustrator that you used here why would you say that you're an illustrator um i don't know well i use the term illustrator when 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 using um when i'm doing work for commercial gigs like movie posters or uh um you know album covers or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know why, I, I don't really see the difference, I guess, I don't know. It's illustrated just seems more, less fine artsy than fine art, I guess uh -huh. is what I'm trying to say. But yeah, it's all art, I guess, in my opinion. Okay, yeah, I mean, I guess um, I, uh, I personally also can't really tell the difference necessarily between quote unquote fine art and quote unquote illustration. Um, the only perception, I mean, I have a vague idea, I guess. Sometimes I can tell when something is illustrative, um, but I also have the vague impression that um, somehow, for whatever reason that I don't, I don't quite grasp, grasp, illustration is sometimes, it's insinuated to be somehow inferior to fine art. I don't know mm -hmm. if, you, if you have that impression. Um, and I guess, um, the difference that I perceive sometimes, not all the time, is, I mean, when something is uh, purported to be illustration and not fine art, it has kind of like a graphic kind of cartoon sort of quality, like flavor to it. I'm not sure. What do you think about those, those two things? Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't really know. I guess <laughs> maybe it's just fine art is more pretentious to say, <laughs> yeah. um, but I don't know. They're one and the same. It, it, I guess illustrative more in the sense of a, in the commercial sense where you're, you're drawing to, you're being hired to draw something for someone that gives you instruction on what to draw. Mm -hmm. um, I think maybe fine art is more of the long lines of you're communicating your own ideas and your own story okay. through visual art. And that to me maybe is, is fine art. I don't know. I mean, it's still illustration, but I think if it has more of a personal, unique meaning to the individual artist, perhaps that's less illustrative and more fine art. I don't know. I have no idea. I try not to you know, split the hairs too much on, on the differences there, but uh, that would be how I perceive it for maybe, I don't know. Okay. No, that's perfectly fair. Um, all right. So, so I, from looking at your at your work in general and your Instagram and your and your website, it seems like you mostly do drawing. Is that right? Um, I'd say it's half, like half and half. Uh, I try to do more of just what, what do you mean, like my style or the medium that you use, or like uh, dry mediums or generally dry mediums like a charcoal and graphite oh, or paper. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I use mostly just charcoal. Um, Conte and graphite is usually my my go to. Um, sometimes I'll take it into Photoshop and digitally finish it and maybe add some, some color or animate it if I wanted to. But uh, yeah, primarily just uh, like charcoal and graphite is my, my main ones, yeah. Okay, so then when did you, I mean, you said about, you said that you've been 
I mean, I guess the, the 10 years that you referred to just now, is that like your uh, like career as an illustrator or does that also include the time when you started drawing? Uh, well, I started drawing since I was like maybe five or six, but uh, professionally pr pursuing it as a full-time career about 10 years ago. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. Um, but like kind of part-time before that, maybe three years. But uh, I used to work as a, uh, an architectural engineer. And then on the side, I would do gallery shows, like group shows. And then from there, decided that it was going really well. So I made that huge leap and do just doing full time, quit my job, went full time into art and so far so good. So, um, uh, I mean, the past few years has been a little rocky because of the pandemic and like mm -hmm. just burnout overall. But uh, yeah, it's pretty much, um, it's a constant struggle for an artist, but I'm lucky enough to be doing this for 10 years. So, yeah. Yeah, that's really, that's really great. Um, that's awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. That's really, I mean, I'm sure that it comes with its own difficulties because like everything, everything comes with its own difficulties, right? Um, but uh, I am curious in that case about, I mean, if you remember, because you said you were very young when you started drawing, do you know why you started drawing? And then and then afterwards, you know, why did you keep drawing? Um, it's funny. It, it all comes down to like this one moment in particular that I remember. I don't know if I ever shared this with anyone, but it's like um, it happened in grade two. And I remember we had like an art class and the assignment was to uh, go through like this stack of newspapers, like old newspapers, pick out a picture and then try to draw what we see. Mm -hmm. And I remember specifically it was a picture of the, the, the picture I chose was a picture of when Mike Tyson first lost uh -huh. and, uh, and uh, I, I remember drawing it and then everyone was kind of like watching me do it. I must have killed it because everyone was like, holy shit, that's uh -huh. like, like even my teacher was like, that's amazing. And then that kind of made me that like, I, obviously I still remember it to this day. So that kind of left an impression on me. I feel like that was a catalyst for me to be like, this was fun. And I liked how uh, it made me feel <laughs> to, yeah. to have this talent at an early age, I guess. Um, and then that continued on with my neighbor, Frankie, who would introduce me to like DC comics and Batman and stuff like that. And I would just like be amazed at the drawings and stuff. And I would recreate that. And then as I kept going, it was just like finding my own voice and my own style, I guess throughout the years. And yeah, it was just like something that I, I just loved doing. It was like addictive to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you think maybe the attention that you got in that specific, in that specific event that you're describing, do you think that had something to do with it? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a shallow thing, but yeah, I, I, I mean, I can't be, I can't lie. I mean, honestly, it was like, I'm not good at a lot of things, but, <laughs> but <laughs> like having this one thing that I am, you know, good at, and then people praising me over I mean it feels good I'm not gonna lie <laughs> yeah at, no. a, at a young age you know you're like that's all you want is for people to like you right so that Absolutely. was a nice, nice shot to the self-esteem I think which is good for a young kid to have you know so no yeah. for sure yeah yeah no I'm not trying to give you grief or anything I'm just kind of no. I'm just kind of musing about my own because I, I consider myself a little bit an attention whore I mean I uh I mean not you know, to the degree that I'll do stupid shit to put it on a, like a uh, uh, TikTok or something. Um, I, I, I kind of like, I really like the idea of like earning the attention and the adulation and stuff. So, so rather similarly to what you're saying, I mean, I really, I really like it when somebody is like, oh my God, your drawing is amazing. And this, and this, the other stuff, you know, uh, once I have the attention, I don't know exactly what to do with it, but I know that I like to get it, you know? <laughs> I feel that's, that's, that's a common thing, especially right now. I think the society in general, especially with these apps, that's what it is. It's a, uh, Oh yeah, for sure. It, it, it rewards your, your, it's almost like a, I don't know. It's like a, a dopamine thing where like you get, you get praise and you want more of it. So you search that out more so than even what you're the, like you don't even really care about what you're making sometimes. I know I feel mm. that way. I'm not as much anymore, but like I would just make shit just to get some kind of reaction sometimes. But like, I mean, I don't do that anymore. I just draw what I want and not care or care about the algorithms or how many likes I'm getting. Cause like it's it's and like the, the lately, like especially with Instagram and stuff, like people's likes and whatever are, are dwindling now. And it's not good to, for some people who are just like that's all they were 
doing this for was the attention, right? And now they're not getting it. And you see people just lose their minds and, and uh, get really depressed over that. So it's like, it's kind of unhealthy in a way. Yeah. It's, it's an interesting like juxtaposition where I was saying earlier, like it's, it's nice for young kids to have that confidence growing up, but then it can get to it. Like when you're an adult now, like it can get to an unhealthy state where that's all you're seeking is just validation from complete strangers. Right. Um, so there's a balance there, I guess, but I try not to do that as much anymore. So, yeah, yeah no, um, definitely, definitely agreed on the, on the relationship with the social media, because um, I myself, of course, you know, um, I've experienced that very thing as well, to the point that um, it started polluting my decisions when I was making my work, when yeah. I was making my work. So um, it um, generally, I can tell when something for it, I mean, the way that I have uh, kind of concluded that it's affecting me is that um, so before or just like generally, I can tell when something is one of my drawings is done, for example. And then as as the relationship with uh, social media, like just, uh, you know, advanced or developed or whatever, like as we as I've been using it, I noticed that I was like, I don't know if it's done. It is, is it done? Is it not? You know, like that that decision making towards, you know, like knowing whether whether the drawing was done or not was becoming really murky. And I was like, you know, it's like and so like I've been more recently just not posting and I've been working towards slowly because I'm uh, cold turkey doesn't work very well for me for things that I want to get rid of. Uh, so like gradually I started like alright i'm not going to look at the phone until noon or like 1230 whatever. Uh, for that's how I started and so like now I like I go the entire weekend without even looking at the phone, for example, and it's like it's incredibly yeah it's like I, i'm pretty I, I feel really good about having achieved that because it's like it's amazing what it'll do for my for my mind it's like I feel way better i'm not just like sitting in a puddle of anxiety all the time and i'm like looking because it's like a i mean i don't know if you um you might have experienced it but it's like you it's like i i'm just sitting there scrolling looking at other people posting every day somehow i don't know how the shit they do it but the thing is that i'm just like scrolling there and i'm thinking about what i should be doing to like try to propel my career that same way and it's like this yeah loop of again and again scrolling and thinking these things and it's like all right and then i'm not doing it you know so anyway um <laughs> it's just, uh, yeah the psychological uh aspects and layering of of how we interact with that is really very interesting because it, it effectively is also having an influence on uh art you know yeah like, yeah it's yeah. not like if you think about it like before apps like what have artists done before instagram right and like we never had that feedback loop from from other people and i think it's greatly influenced a lot of artists uh, and how they work so they're constantly chasing approval and all that mm -hmm. stuff and it's it definitely yeah it's it's something that like like you I'm, I'm trying to like not have that influence me anymore um and also just the pressure too is is too much like i already have enough pressure to like yeah. make work just for money um the pressure of keeping relevant so people can see so people might buy more yeah that that is, is a huge influence as well and i hate that um but i mean that's the world we live in now i guess i don't know any other way to get my work out there um and make a living uh you know to pay my bills or my mortgage and, and all that stuff so um yeah unfortunately you know you, you kind of have to find that balance of trying not to get too involved with the addictive side of it Mm. but also trying to not lose quote unquote relevance in the eyes of people on these yeah. social media you know it's 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 hard but yeah I don't yeah. Know. I don't, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's definitely difficult but it's de but it's also doable in my opinion uh because but like for example what i'm trying to do with my relationship with the social media is to go to like bring the control back to me in the sense that i'm it's a tool for me to promote my work like instead of having it uh, take over my thoughts, like in that uh, anxiety loop that I was talking about just now, it's yeah. just a tool. I post what I have to post and then, you know, maybe I'll interact a little bit, but then that, that's it. And it like, I don't think about it anymore. Like I want right. to return its status into a tool, like the same way a pencil is a yeah. tool, you know? Right. Right. Okay. Um, okay, so I would like to know a little bit more about this use of Photoshop for your own work. I wonder when did you start using a digital tool to interfere with your work and what role does it play in your work 
Um, okay, uh, so like I actually started off as fully digital um, uh, when I started. Um, I'll just Photoshop using a tablet and I would draw that way. Uh -huh. But um, after a while, like my style was completely, completely different than what, I, what it is now. I used to draw really intricate, just like line work and stuff okay. um, using brushes in, in Photoshop. But then after a while, I started to develop a pain in my wrist and my elbow from drawing too much detail in such a cramped way. Okay. Um, I decided to transition more into something that's a bit more gestural and less impact on my wrist and my my elbow and so I found um, working with pastels and charcoal help with that not making like definite lines but like just trying to blend and like all that stuff so it, it changed greatly but I still kept that knowledge of, of working in digital still in my head mm -hmm. um, so then you fast forward a little bit now and um, working when you when you mix did the working in digital after you're working with, with like just like your hand hands making um like charcoal drawings and stuff you can really push uh the creativity more if you if you go into a more digital um direction with it as well mm -hmm. um uh for example like I, i'm terrible with color so mm -hmm. um getting to experiment with color in photoshop has freed me up to, to kind of make mistakes and learn from them more you just control z on do it right yeah so it's yeah not that big of a deal um and also like if i'm not sure uh, if I should add a certain element to a piece, I could do it digitally first and see how that works. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but then also now, like with, with animating and stuff like that too, it's that's kind of starting to open up a, 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 another creative avenue as well to see where I can take my story that I made on paper and see if I could make another story or keep the same story but drive it home even harder if it's animated or whatever, digitized or whatever. So. Um, it's been it's been fun exploring that. Also, too, like when I do commercial work, like when I'm doing like movie posters or whatever. I mean, you have to make it digital, so like adding text and stuff like that, um, or if you have to separate it. I don't separate my work for screen printing, but some people have to do that for me. Um, so there is that digital aspect of it as well in the commercial world, where you can't just draw it and then that's it. So um, yeah, so learning digital, I think, is a, is, a, is a is a valuable tool for every artist. I think every artist should know how to use it like the fundamentals at least so yeah that's how i use it okay so you said you said that you were doing uh, all digital work at some point how long ago was that uh, and, for how long, and for how long did you do it i'd say i mean maybe 13 years ago like like when i started doing gallery shows i guess um is when i did full digital i don't know why i, I gravitated more to it i just thought it was easier to work with but um yeah i did that for about I don't know. I don't know when I transitioned to charcoal, like maybe 2015 ish. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But yeah, it was mostly just digital around that time before that. So yeah. Okay. So, so um, uh, it seems like you were quite familiar in that. I mean, if you were doing, I mean, I had the impression that you were really quite familiar with the, with making work completely digitally in a tablet. And so now you're familiar with making work completely. Uh, analog. Um, so wh what comparisons can you make between the two mediums in the sense that, I mean, do you ever want to go, do you ever, I mean, I mean, I'm, I, I try to think of digital as just another medium like oil painting and mm -hmm. drawing, you know, painting and drawing digital. So, yeah. so do you ever feel inclined to do digital work as an artist would feel like painting at some point and drawing at some uh, in another point? Oh, I see. Um, not so much. I mean, like there are tools that mimic painting and charcoal drawing really well in digital. I just, I just don't feel the same. I mean, it's not the same. Like I, I can't like, it's holding like a weird tool like this to smudge your pastel and like it's just it's so much easier mm -hmm. and more um just natural feeling and yeah. just coming in with like a needable eraser taking out what you don't need and also to just having that i don't know some people might think this is a bad side of analog but like i find it better to have to not have the option to undo everything mm -hmm. um kind of live with the mistakes you make and try to make the best of them and sometimes i've literally like made huge mistakes with my work and just <laughs> kept going and ended up being some of the best things that i've ever done right mm -hmm. um i feel like 
undoing your work and having that ability is kind of a crutch in a way. Um, but uh, I mean, it's good too to just learn stuff. But like, like I said earlier about the coloring, like I could just undo it if I wanted to. But it just this is something about working with actual paper that's so much better than just digital. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't, I don't think ever I'm gonna do an entire digital piece. Not anymore, anyway. I don't think I'll, I'll ever ever roll. To be honest, I always start off with just pencil and paper. So it's just so much better. I, it's hard to describe, but um, I just prefer it that way. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I. I don't have the experience that you have with digital and it's actually quite difficult for me to like, uh, I don't know, accept it <laughs> as its own medium. I, I, I'm like really skeptical about it. I mean, no, skeptical is not the right word. It's like, um, I don't know, like it's almost like a click in a way in the sense that I like, oh, I don't know if I can accept you into my click, I don't, something like that. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I'm not entirely sure how to explain it but I, I have trepidations about the digital media and it's not that I haven't tried it I have tried it although I don't consider I don't I haven't given it a real chance yet uh, I'm, I'm trying to because I don't want to you know discriminate um, but the times that I've tried it and I, I guess that's kind of to your point of what you were saying about the the you know there's nothing like paper I don't I really do one of the things that I dislike the most is the way that it feels because you have yeah. like the tip of the stylus which is plastic and so it's sliding yeah. over the surface of the of the tablet which is also plastic and so like these two plastics sliding against each other like i don't like how that feels and it's like it it's it's they're different materials than graphite and paper so it's physically impossible for them to feel the same as graphite over paper i greatly enjoy the friction of charcoal graphite on the grain of on sure. the tooth of the paper like i really like that uh that relationship and how the, they feel. The, the, there are things you could buy for your tablet that you stick on that will mimic yeah. that feeling yeah um i've never tried them but uh some my, a lot of my artists don't swear by it where it feels like you're drawing on paper mm -hmm. i don't buy it necessarily i like granted i've never tried it but um but also like too like there's that little thin piece of glass that your pen sits on that doesn't quite connect to the screen so it's kind of like it's a little off uh -huh. too, so it doesn't feel right yeah that, that stuff is you get used to it but yeah i totally know what you mean it's just not the same yeah yeah i think that's some that's also something that i would have to uh, get used to because i i i didn't know there was like that amount of um separation where you know yeah. it could like visually it probably looks like it's not even touching the tablet yeah um, it doesn't Okay. Um, all right. So then the, the term that you used just now mimicking, um, I wanted to ask you about something else regarding digital media. Um, so, you know, when a person is starting out on their artistic journey, like on the path to find our artistic voice, like our own language, our own style, uh, it's pretty common to start by imitating. You know, uh, you know, uh, I, I did master copies lots of times, you know, painting and drawing. You know that's pretty common not just in like school when you go to art school but you know we um, i mean i did i definitely did that before i long before i ever went to art school that i was like imitating the styles of artists whose work i liked so um to put a parallel with the digital media digital media is a, like a new media so it's imitating it's trying really very hard and you know achieving it quite well to imitate the traditional media. Um, so, so my question is, what, what do you think, like in your opinion, by the time, what will, what will be digital media's own voice when it, because, because right now it's like in the doing the master copies pace, face, in my opinion. Um, so like when it finds its own voice and moves on into being its own media, that it won't be imitating traditional media, like, do you think it'll, what kind of stuff do you think it'll be able to do that the analog media can't do? Well, I mean, like right now, the big debate amongst a lot of artists I've seen on Twitter is this new AI, AI generated art. I don't know if you've seen any of this stuff, but like yeah. Dolly and Mid Journey and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So the uh, huge problem with that is, um, I mean, the technology is pretty rigging Google. I, I've, I've used it, I've used Midjourney, and it's kind of, it's really interesting making work using words and prompts and stuff like that. But where, where it's like kind of sketchy is when like 
you use words like, I don't know, uh, draw me something that looks like an HR geek you're drawing, right? Mm -hmm. where, where does the ethical line sit with that? Because now you're using, <clears throat> I mean, it's not a, it's not a unique Giger art, but you're using his style to make new work, new work mm -hmm. that you're not even drawing. It's mm -hmm. a computer using AI and like inputs and whatever algorithms it figures out. This is what, and like I've seen pieces that look like this looks like a Giger painting. Mm -hmm. Like if, if you didn't tell me it was AI generated, I wouldn't have known. So mm -hmm. like, it's this weird line of like, where, where are we allowed to take this? Like, um, and I mean, that, that whole, that whole scene is like a whole, it's a rabbit hole of, of, of like ethics and like, whatever, I don't want to get too into it, but like in terms of digital being its own voice, like that, that's where I see it heading um, soon. And, and, but like, also, I don't know if you meant more like a, traditional digital artists where you're just working with um tablet or whatever i mean that, that has its own voice too already i feel like a lot of like game designers where use that and that they're primarily digital right and um i think that has its own voice i could clearly know when something is digital sometimes and i think i still think it's awesome and clearly these people are, are really fucking talented people mm -hmm. um, i look up to some of them so it's like um you know, it definitely has its own its own place in the art world. Like, I I feel anyway, but it's just that AI stuff. I'm just, I'm still trying to figure it out myself. <laughs> it's yeah, yeah. really sketchy, but I don't know. Who knows what happens? Yeah, I I, I share I share that feeling also. Um, because it's like if I'm if I'm skeptical about work made with a tablet, it's like <laughs> yeah. work work made by by an AI. I mean, not I mean not the. I don't think the AI itself is at fault or anything because it's obviously a machine that is doing what it's what is being asked of it with information that was fed into it, you know. Yeah. Um, so I don't think the the device itself is at fault in any capacity. It's like our usage and the uh, the the consequences that it's going to have, like in our ideas or mental processes regarding art and the making of art. Like, that's what I'm more, you know, like, you know, giving it squinty eyes, kind of, yeah. uh, what's going to happen with it. Because, I, like, what you were saying just now, like, the the ethics, uh, that aspect of it is like, oh, so, like, now can the person claim that work as their yeah. own because, because they're the ones that told the computer what to do, you know? So it's, it's like... It's so weird. I, I don't yeah. know. I don't know. It, it's, I don't know where I stand on it. <laughs> it's it's been one of those things lately like the past like few months where i'm just like i don't know i don't know if i could get behind it it's a cool tool to use like it's impressive yeah um but like just more and more like especially just lately like i've seen pieces where it's just like holy shit like this is incredible like this doesn't even start it doesn't stop at illustration either it's like it's everything in the creative industry like I feel like we're going to get to a point now where we just tell a computer to make us a new movie using certain actors. And then the, I don't know. Yeah. I, I feel like I saw somewhere, I, of course, I'm not going to know where I found it, but like someone did something similar to that where it was AI generated scripts and like I feel with, with deep fakes and all that stuff. Oh, and yeah. It's going to be so, like, we're already almost there, like with this AI generated imagery. Why, what's to stop us from like, moving that into moving pictures and stuff it's going to be crazy the next like 20 years i feel it's going to be weird i feel creative creatives are gonna <laughs> there's going to be a big rift between uh human creatives versus ai yeah that that yeah that also sounds interesting i mean i think one of my own problems with that is um like like i was saying just now the um, the um, how it's going to influence the way that we think about art and just think about humans making things because um you know it, there's always somebody that's like oh yeah you know humans can't do that because uh our hands are not good enough for it's like you know the eyes uh, can't focus that small or whatever right. and you know we don't have the tools or something and then it's like you know if you look at van Eyck, okay he was back there back then doing ridiculous shit just by hand and a brush so it's like so it's like the, the the doubts that we have about human capabilities 
are, you know, we, it, there, there's like all kinds of arguments to add to our weaknesses and our, you know, we can't do that or whatever it is. Um, so like, so I, I guess um, what I'm trying to say is that I fear that people will start to think that, oh, there's no way that a human could have made the art that that AI made. For example, right. you know, like, oh, it's like, no, there's no way. It's like, no way humans could be able to do that because uh, we can't see that many colors. I mean, I don't know, so that, like, that, that kind of stuff yeah. that people say sometimes. Um, yeah, so like, that's kind of the fear, I get, not fear, just, you know, hesit hesitations that I have, yeah, yeah. Uh, cogitations that I have on the subject. Uh, because I really um, revere and respect the human body, and I think we don't know the limits of it in any capacity, really. Uh, because, for example, and uh, this will be one of the last digressions, um, you know, if you if you think about things like the placebo effect and the nocebo effect, which is like a ne the, the negative opposite of placebo, placebo is generally positive. It's like it looks like the body and the brain or whatever have it looks like the body has like a quasi supernatural capacity to do shit to itself, right. which is, which is just friggin' amazing. And it's like, we obviously do, we do not know how the placebo works. The placebo effect works. We don't know how lots of things work. Um, so, so by that same argument, it's like, we know, we do not know the limits of the human body in any capacity. And it's like, it's just so much easier to think that it's like, Oh no, humans can't do that. You know? Right. Uh, and I, I, I feel scorn towards that kind of thinking, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I guess, I don't know. How, how, what's the percentage that we use our brains? It's like something minuscule, isn't it? And like- That's what they say, yeah. I, mean, I don't want to get into a whole thing about like psychedelics, but like, I mean, that, that when it unlocks, when you take something that unlocks the majority of that and like the things you can see that you can never think of when you're <laughs> on hallucinogens. And, and psychedelics, it's like, yeah, like you said, like, who knows what we're fully capable of that even AI can't even do. I don't know. Absolutely. All right. Um, all right. So, Mr. Ortiz, what is art in your opinion? Um, God, I have no idea. <laughs> um, I mean, it could mean so many things. To me, art is just, it's for me anyway, it's, it's just the way um, you can communicate yourself in a creative way without just like saying it, I guess. Um, but it's also in a way to communicate it in a, in, in a way, in a creative way that reaches other people um, that they can connect with on a more emotional and mental level, rather than just like saying exactly what you're trying to say kind of thing. And it allows you to communicate what you can communicate with words, I feel. That to me is what art is. It's 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 communication. Yeah. Okay. So, would you say? Would you say? I'm gonna try to to paraphrase to see to see if I get it. Um. So then, it's trying to. So all right. So art, in your opinion, is to try to say something to someone else. That generally cannot be said with with quote unquote, regular words. And what you tell them via this medium, this uh, method, will make that person feel something. Yeah, exactly. I, I, that's how I feel. Yeah. Okay, so, okay, so um, when, so, okay, so then when you make work, and you know you have the, the thoughts that you, you know, when you make work, there's what you what the work means to you, what um, what you were what you're trying to say with the work, is it really important to you that a viewer understands exactly what you meant, or are you happy with just the person liking the work and just feeling something meaningful upon looking at the work? Like it doesn't have to be exactly what you meant it to mean. When someone connects with it and gets it, that's the cherry on top. But I'm cool when they don't either. Um, the, the, the thing I don't want people to do when they see my work or just work in general is they look at it and go, that's a drawing of that. And then they just move on. Right. Okay. If, even if for like a, a second where they just stop on it and go, I, I, I like that. Mm -hmm. That to me is success. 
uh, with a piece. Um, if they take it a step further and say, this makes me feel something, that's even better. And then if they take it a step further and say, I identify with this piece because whatever, whether it is exactly what I was trying to communicate, whether they extrapolate a different, complete, completely different meaning that is unique to them, mm. the, the, the purpose of that work at that point has now come to fruition of what I wanted. I wanted to communicate with someone on some kind of level, um, even if they hate it. Like, I mean, I'm totally down with that too. Like, like if we could have a moment, not even, I don't have to be in the same room, obviously, but if, we, if I could take someone's moment from them where they reflect, I feel that is a, a successful piece in my opinion. And that's why I love, that's what I love about making art. I mean, it sounds so pretentious, but, <laughs> but that, that's so. why I do it. It's because, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely, you know, I'm not the most social guy in the world. I'm very introverted as well. Um, and I sometimes have a hard time communicating how I feel. But when it comes to drawing how I feel, I feel I'm good at that mm. sometimes. Um, and when people connect with it, that just reaffirms that, yeah, this is the best way I can communicate um, really deep and dark, usually, feelings with an audience. And for someone to connect with me on that level, it makes me feel not so alone in this world, you know? So um, that to me is, is, for me anyway, that's art. And not, not to say that if I, that's not what art is, then it's not art, but because like cl clearly I make, you know, commercial work too. And like, I, I would argue that that's art as well. But <laughs> yeah. um, in terms of like personal pieces, yeah, I mean, like that's that to me is, is art. Okay. Um, well, I don't. Well, I, I have a couple of things to say about this. Uh, sure. I, I don't think that's pretentious what you're saying, and yeah. I also I don't get the impression that you're like bad at socializing. Although although um, I feel like that's also kind of that's uh, I find some kind of a similarity with my own behavior there because like I, you know I I talked to you a while ago so you probably had time to get mentally ready for it which is what works for me uh, I prefer to make plans ahead of time and so then sure. I can start getting ready to for you know mentally ready for whatever it is that I'm gonna do in that uh, the uh, scheduled appointment um, maybe that works for you as well uh, but I don't I don't get the impression that you're like socially awkward or something. <laughs> Well, I mean, I can be. I mean, like this. When it comes to art, like and talking about my work, I could, I could talk about this shit all day. Like, mm -hmm. like I mean, like in a party setting, right? I don't talk about. I don't. The way I've been talking for the past however minutes is not how I'd be talking to someone at a party, you know. And the yeah. party setting is different. I don't know how to do that stuff. I don't know how to do small talk. Like, really. well, I, I can do it, but I'm just like, I'm not as comfortable as me talking about what art means to me or whatever. But um, yeah, that's that's perfectly fair. Um, Okay, um, um, you were saying something about your work as well just now. Um, oh, when you were when you were saying just now about if a viewer can identify with your work, um, what is what is that what does that mean to identify? Because I, I think that was like in the steps that you were describing just now of like, like yeah, really, so, really gratifying, yeah. yeah. You know, whether it be visual art or a, even a song or like a movie or whatever, I feel mm -hmm. the best ones are always the ones that that move me and I connect and I understand, maybe not even understand what the artist is trying to say, but um, understand a part of myself that this particular thing has brought out in me. Um, that is something that I want to give to a viewer as well. I want to be the one to to bring that out in another person as well, right? Because when it happens to me, it feels great. Mm. It makes you feel seen. It makes you feel understood. Um, and like I said earlier, it makes you feel not so alone in the world because there are other people that feel this way. Mm. Um, and invoking that kind of thing with an audience is, is it feels great to know. I, I love like seeing when people comment on my work, whether it be, like I said, positive or negative or whatever. Mm. Um, as long as I made you take the time I respect that and thank you for sharing with me that time so mm -hmm. um yeah that that to me is, is the connection I, I look for so yeah okay <laughs> uh, um how far ahead would you say that you think when you're making something because I mean I uh, based on on your description of uh when you make work uh 
So do you think as far ahead as when a, when a, I mean, so when you're making drawings, you're thinking of a potential person that's going to look at the work and feel something meaningful when they look at the work. I mean, would you say that you deliberately make work for a viewer uh, in a way, I guess? Uh, I mean, uh, I guess I wonder how far ahead on the life of your work do you think? Like, do you want your work to last uh, hundreds of years, for example, for future people to look at? You know, like, do you, how far ahead would you say that you think in terms of the life of your work? Um, I don't really. I just, I have, I think about stuff that goes on in my life and, and I try to exercise that into my drawings. Um, you know, I mean, if you look at my drawings, you might think I'm like this, like really sad and uh, <laughs> a dark individual. I'm not really, but like, that's how I kind of, um, like I said, exercise these, these demons in a way to and put it on paper. Um, I don't think about, uh, you know, I don't think what, what piece should I make today that someone's going to identify with. I just know already that um, if I make something that someone's going to understand how I'm feeling mm, with yeah. this drawing, right? So um, I try to just be myself and how I feel in that moment. And if I want to communicate that, through my art, I will. And then at some point, maybe someone will say, hey, I, I totally see what you're saying with this. So um, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so what, what would you say your work is about? Um, uh, just about feeling, uh, you know, there's a lot of artwork out there that I'm just not, I don't connect with like really happy, poppy, mm -hmm. colorful art, you know, yeah. um, I'm not that kind of person. Um, or rather, I don't consume art like that. I mean, sometimes it's fun, but like when I make art, it is usually, as some people would say, it's, it's dark. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's dark, it's, it's sad, it's disturbing. Um, but like I said, like that's, I make that because I don't want that feeling in me. Uh, so much and and having and being sad or whatever it's not a great feeling but it, it's it's what makes us human as well yeah absolutely. and I feel like we shouldn't turn away from that kind of stuff um uh, I mean like there there, there are a, a huge gamut of human emotions that we could communicate with artwork why I choose dark I don't know why I just feel like it's not represented as much uh or maybe it is I don't know I'm talking on my ass. I don't know, but I, that's just that's just what I want to communicate. I want I want people to understand like it's okay to feel this way, and you're not alone because I feel this way too. You know, and um, I feel that's more important than saying I'm happy. Doesn't it feel great to feel happy? It's like yeah, obviously it is, <laughs> but also it's okay to be sad. So I don't know. That's what my art is. I don't know. Yeah, no, I I, I like that a lot. Um, I myself am. Um... Um, I've, I've always thought that I am pretty accepting of like that spectrum of emotion and feeling that we're capable of experiencing, but uh, I've been practicing recently kind of sitting with things that feel bad yeah, or just not as, you know, that feel a little bit unsavory for a little bit longer because I, I caught myself or not, I caught myself, I noticed that um, sometimes if my mind was like busy with some something that was making me anxious or bother just bothering me i would just put on a podcast and draw right. and i was like you know i didn't think that listening to a podcast could constitute escapism <laughs> you know in that way and yeah. um it's just like uh i mean i'm just you know musing about this to agree with you that effectively i, I personally find it very refreshing when quote unquote uh negative feelings or you know like quote unquote dark feelings are uh, portrayed in refreshing ways and then you know uh you know that's how you see it or that's how this other artist sees it and and I, I find that kind of work really very refreshing not just in the subject matter but in the limited color palette a lot of times it's associated with right. darker stuff you know like oh right. like the charcoal oh my god the 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 black I mean you know black is arguably not a, not a color like the charcoal color but I adore looking at it, like when it's yeah. solid, you know, it's just so rich and deep and 
very I find it very gratifying when it's when it's used well in imagery, you know, in art. Um, anyway, uh, that's that's a long winded uh, agreeing with you, I guess, and, and and saying that I like that aspect of, of your work. And I mean, I've had my work as well in the past described as like dark and I'm and I, and I get a little bit annoyed at the term being used because I also no. feel like because I also feel like it's it's said in a negative way and like, oh, exactly. my God, that's like side. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't I don't like that term myself. I mean, um, yeah, it's it's yeah, it, like you said, it already sets it off immediately as this negative connotation where you're dark and it's like you all of a sudden you, you picture like you know some dark god, not that there's anyone <laughs> yeah. god, but it's like no, it's like if you know me, I'm not like that at all, and it feels misrepresentative of what I'm trying to make, you know. Um, yeah, it's it's dark, but I, I I prefer the term more adult word. <laughs> yeah. But um, you know, but yeah, I just that, that term in itself is uh, I wish that wasn't the term most people use to to convey my work. But that's just it's like it. oh my god, it's so dark. Are you sad? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I don't know. I, it's yeah, it's it's yeah. Uh, it's kind of funny. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay, um, okay. So, Mr. Randy Ortiz, what is beauty in your opinion? Uh, beauty is accepting everything that's not just pretty or beautiful. It's like everything else too. It's, it's the shitty things. It's the things that make us human, basically. Um, the sadness, the anger, the whatever you have, it's, it's, it's an acceptance of everything that makes us human. And I feel that you'll find beauty in all kinds of facets of, of human emotion I mean that's so corny but like that's how I feel and that's what I make art like that's I'm drawn to stuff like that you know like like an art with with the darker stuff because I think it's beautiful as well right um and I feel yeah that's I don't know if that answers the question but <laughs> it's such a hard question to answer but it's, it's that's my instinct on how I Mm -hmm. I would answer that, you know. No, I like that a lot um, because, um, well, because uh, I agree and because also, um, I guess, I guess, I guess I also really liked the, because it includes pretty, like you said, as part of the gamut of stuff, but it also makes a difference between pretty and beautiful. Uh, it also like marks the difference between pretty and, and beautiful. You know, like like pretty can be an aspect, can be part of the of the of the spectrum, but it's not it's not the only thing. Right. You know, because like it definitely gets conflated a little. You know, it gets confused with. Uh, be beautiful very often and it's really like it's cool if it's part of it but it's but it was so like the point I think one of the one of the aspects of beauty is that it's very layered and very complex it yeah. encompasses a lot of things yeah exactly like like for example I, I watched a movie recently called Amour by a uh, director Michael Haneke and uh, what was the name of the movie uh, sorry Amour ah. A-M-O-U-R um extremely sad extremely depressing and it, it made me cry several times uh -huh. and it was it was just a constant just 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 absolute depressing movie but it was from beginning to end one of the most beautiful things i've ever seen in my life right and that's interesting because you think beauty is as pretty as attractive or whatever but for most people whatever um but for me things like that 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 to me is like an extra layer of beauty where you could find it in something that isn't supposed to be beautiful. And it's like, to find that in something like that is, is, is an extra layer of meaning when it comes to beauty, you know? Mm. Um, and hopefully, uh, you know, I try to communicate that kind of thing with my work. I'm not saying my work is beautiful, but it's like, you know, I try, I try to mimic some of the, some of that aspect with my work too, so, yeah. I think that, um... I think it echoes a little bit to what we were talking about uh, art uh, just now in that um, in that 
contrast of the quote unquote darker stuff having meaningful presence in in the like all the plethora of work that you see out there you know and it's like uh, i think in a, actually also in a previous episode it was mentioned like that contrast was mentioned the the relationship within that contrast of seeing seeing like the more cheer like arguably cheerful things exist alongside the arguably darker things um and kind of appreciating their contrast and appreciating their presence in that um wide you know the, the capability that we have of feeling both things and just every absolutely everything in between yeah and and yeah seeing uh, i i really appreciate uh i mean i tend to gravitate towards the quote unquote arguably darker stuff but i appreciate good represent like good meaningful portrayal of both right you know like uh, it's it's like and i mean like you were talking when you was like you were saying about this movie it's like being shown something well made i mean that uh, some something about with this uh subject matter that is well made is like what a way it's like what a way to show reverence and appreciation for that aspect of human feeling mm -hmm. you know like in that like in a respectful way like not in a yeah. I don't know, facile or whatever way. It's like, it's like, all right. So sometimes uh, I feel sad or I have these um, thoughts that make me feel like crap. But, but you know, I acknowledge them and I appreciate them as part of all the stuff that I feel. And it's like, you know, seeing seeing that conveyed in imagery, like a drawing or a movie or whatever it is. It's like it's really, really, uh, it's really quite gratifying to see. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, that's part of being human, right? You can't turn away with what makes us human. And I think acceptance of that the entire spectrum of what it is being human is, is great. So, <laughs> yeah. Indeed. Yeah, no, I, I think, yeah, I think, that, I think, I think uh, your definition or, or your opinion of what is beauty is probably one of my favorites so far. Uh, in, in, the, in previous episodes, the, the concept of nature has been related to beauty, which is my other favorite. And it's, okay, uh, yeah. I just, yeah. And I think, yeah, that's, that's really great. All right. So, okay. So, um, we have reached the 50 minute mark oh, wow. of, our con of our conversation. <laughs> yes. Nice. That was, yeah, that was very enjoyable. And, uh, I appreciate your time very much. I think this is a good place to end this episode with, with this, uh, really great thoughts on what beauty is. Um, so Randy, please tell our viewers and listeners what you're up to lately, where your work can be found. Is there anything in particular that you're excited about or something of well, the sort? Sure. So um, currently I am going through this thing with a lot of other artists that are going through it, which is called burnout. And uh, <laughs> it's been extremely hard to figure out what to draw lately. Um, so I got not a whole lot coming up. I'm just trying to make make work as it comes but man if anyone has any tips on how to overcome burnout i've been going through this for like the past two years oh no um, yeah it's brutal i mean i'll come up with stuff every now and then um that i share i mean if you just look at my instagram randy ortiz dtd or on my twitter at damn the design um I'll, I'll have some stuff posted up every now and then and some older stuff too mm -hmm. that a lot of people haven't seen before so I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, I've got commercial work that I can't really talk about because I signed an NDA. Um, yeah. So look on, I guess, look out for that <laughs> in a few months if you see my work out there. Um, but uh, other than that, yeah, it's, I've just been trying to trying to be creative. And it's um, one of the hardest things about being an artist is trying to be creative, which is hilarious because that's what you do. <laughs> yeah. But uh, a lot of people don't understand that, like, you know, sometimes you're not feeling it. And sometimes I could steamroll into constantly not feeling it. Um, hopefully, I'll, I'll, I'll get out of this funk sooner or later. So, <laughs> sorry, such a depressing hopefully. ending. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, I guess I guess it's in tune with the stuff that that you're <laughs> that yeah. we were talking about just now. I mean, I don't think you know. I, I think it'll whenever you're ready. It's gonna you know the 
the whole concept of drawing or like the work it's going to be waiting for you whenever you're it's going to it's going to be there for you whenever you're ready so whenever yeah, that is totally. it's going to be great we'll see yeah <laughs> all right so so um real quickly i guess i'm curious about this damn the design <laughs> what's up with that name oh it's it's a it's a corny ass title that i picked when i was like i don't know before I even like went full time into artwork, I just wanted something catchy for a website name. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And for some reason, it just it just stuck with me. I don't know what yes. it means. I have no idea what it, what I'm trying to say with that. But um, I just kept it throughout my. Year. I wish I tried being like, should I like shed that and take something else? But it's been too lazy to come up with anything else. I just kept that. Um, okay. Yeah. Sorry, that's no, 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 no actual meaning, but yeah. No, 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 <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That's I, that's perfectly fair because even if even if it, even if it was no particular reason, like it still sticks, kind of. Yeah, kind of works. Yeah. Because yeah, um, I mean, it, it's yeah. I don't know. I think about it. You know, when I when I your email and stuff, and I'm like, oh, damn the design. That's curious. You know, it's kind of like sticky. So it doesn't need a reason. It's like it's cool. It works. Exactly. So it works. So there you go. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right, well then, thank you, Randy, for joining me. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your words and your thoughts. Thank you everyone for joining us. Feel free to let Randy and I know what you think of this conversation in the comments section. I also invite you to subscribe to my audiovisual channel because more of these conversations are coming. I also invite you to like this video and share it with any and all pertinent individuals. If you want to support Randy, myself, this podcast, or all three, the links will be in the video description. So thank you very much, everyone, and see you next time. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye.